I want to start by imagining a different decade to the one we've had. Not a different outcome on the 18th of September 2014, because the people of Scotland voted by a clear margin to remain part of the United Kingdom. Now, I want to imagine what would have happened if John Swinney and his fellow nationalists had been true to their word and respected the result. If they'd used the last 10 years and the powers of this parliament to focus on improving the lives of every man, woman and child in this country. Sadly, they didn't. And even a decade on, we're not discussing what this parliament or this government could do to benefit our constituents. No, we are yet again debating independence. Now, unlike the nationalists, I refuse to talk Scotland down. I believe, I believe that Scotland... Let's hear Mr Ross. I believe that Scotland is a modern, dynamic, diverse country. It's set out in my amendment. But the SNP don't believe that. It's clear from John Swinney's motion. And what a brutal self-assessment of their 17 years in office and how they failed this country. Because where there are failures and challenges facing all of us in Scotland, they've not been caused by the decision of millions of Scots to remain in the United Kingdom. They've been caused by the SNP, the nationalists in government over the last 17 years. They have been caused by a distracted nationalist government that has spent its time in office obsessing about the constitution yeah. rather than focusing on the real priorities for Scots. I'll give way. To First just, Minister. I'm a big fan of being true to your word. So what would have happened if the Conservatives had been true to their word Vote no to stay in the EU, vote no to be an equal partner in the UK, and vote no to be more prosperous. What happened to those promises? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, the Deputy First Minister can't pick and choose. One choice, the Nationalists told us in 2014, a once in a generation opportunity, a gold plated referendum which they would respect, and they have spent the last decade refusing to do so. But I was speaking about the impact this has had. And let's look at Scotland after almost two decades of the SNP in charge. We're a country where alcohol and drugs kills thousands of people every year, where educational standards continue to fall and violence in our classroom continues to rise. And yes, Neil Gray, our NHS is in crisis with, well, he's still shaking his head. I cannot believe the health Through the chair always. does not believe that our health service is in crisis. I'm happy to give way if he can tell us why it's not when one in six of our fellow Scots is on an NHS waiting list. Neil Gray. I, I refuse to talk down the work of our incredible staff and committed <laughs> workforce within our health service. But I will... There was a list there that the First Minister provided of the government's interventions over our time in government. And I'll pick just one. Free prescriptions. The Trussell Trust has assessed that 68% of people on universal credit in the rest of the UK cannot afford to pick up their prescriptions. Can Douglas Knott Ross not understand the value, not just from a social perspective, but from a health perspective, of the intervention that we're making and the investment we're making on free prescriptions? Douglas Ross, can the Health Secretary not understand that we have the highest drug deaths, not in the United Kingdom, but across Europe? We have one in six on an NHS waiting list. That is a crisis. And the fact that he refuses and is unwilling to accept that will be a bitter blow yeah. to people watching this on that NHS waiting list, waiting for treatment, waiting for an appointment, and they just don't get it because it's not their obsession eh, of independence. And far from accepting the result of the referendum, every year since then, every year since the vote didn't go the way the SNP wanted, they've called for a rerun of the referendum. It's as if the first vote didn't count. That was, you know, a proxy one and we'll come back later. It's as if Scottish voters somehow didn't understand or realise the choice they faced. But democracy is not about asking the same question time and time again until you get the result you want. It's about putting forward your arguments, trusting the people with that decision, and then accepting their verdict. Uh, I've given away twice. Is there extra time? There is no extra I'm time I'm sorry, today. I've given away twice to the SNP front bench. Now, John Swinney in his motion claims that independence is normal. But what is not normal is a democracy in which the government ignores the democratic vote yep. of the people. Scotland continues to be shackled by a separatist political ideology 
we did not vote for. The Scottish people want us to move on from this. And if that wasn't crystal clear for the SNP government before the general election, it should be now. They said they wanted to use that election as a de facto referendum. Well, the people of Scotland have once again said no. Now is the time for all of us to really move on, to use the powers of this Parliament to create a better Scotland, instead of blaming others and promising unicorns in an imaginary future. Right across our country, people want change. They can see that the services they use every day are getting worse. Hospitals overcrowded, schools underperforming, our police stretched to breaking point, and they're being asked to pay more for that while getting less. And they look to this parliament for answers, and they see this, a chamber trapped in a time warp discussing an issue which addresses none of the challenges they are facing. If the public, and if any of them are actually watching this, they'd be forgiven for thinking this was a repeat, that the year was 2014, not 2024. Because this is what's happened to the SNP government. It has utterly failed to move on, to commit to the new challenges and the missions that need to be dealt with, and to prove that they have a purpose and a reason to stay in government. Nicola Sturgeon promised that education would be her number one priority, and closing the attainment gap would be her government's defining mission. Well, Scottish school performance is at record lows and the attainment gap is as wide as it's ever been. Hamza Youssef promised to eradicate child poverty, but the rate has increased since 2010. And John Swinney is making the same hollow promise now with no credible proposition to deliver it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm very tight in time. If there was an opportunity to get more time, I would. Key interventions is a matter for members sorry, within I've, the time I've taken allocated. two already from, from the front bench. As historians look back over the last 10 years, they will see them as Scotland's lost decade. The years in which we divided our country and fought bitter arguments against ourselves over an issue we had already voted on. Generations of Scots will come to see this as a national act of self-harm. They will wonder why some chose to continue the same arguments again and again. Why the government of the day chose to indulge in fantasy politics instead of dealing with the real issues faced by our country, or why the national interest was ignored for the SNP's nationalist interest. They will see through the empty promises and understand that for the last 10 years that the independence debate has been a distraction and a deflection from other issues, a pledge wheeled out election after election to avoid having to stand on their own record and a way to blame Westminster for all of its ills that Scotland faces, and ultimately, to avoid taking responsibility for the grave errors they have made. So on this, the 10th anniversary of the 2014 independence referendum, my message to John Swinney and the SNP government is this. You lost. Get over it and let us all move on. Yeah.